Hi. Um, it's uh, good to look at the Word of God together. And uh, I've got a, an unusual title for my talk. We are continuing the letters from lockdown, um, speaking. Uh, we've been looking at Paul's letters, but I'm taking a little sidestep today. And although it's still about uh, the whole situation with lockdown, I'm going to talk from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, a very well-known verse uh, to people. And uh, it's just, this is what I felt God saying to me, but it's still focusing on what we're going through and just how we respond to this situation. And the title is, What Makes a Good Sandwich, uh, which is a very funny title, I know. Um, I was going to say a bit cheesy, but then that sounded a bit cheesy. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And I suspect, um, uh, like many of you, we're getting to the point where just like, when is this going to end? When can I go into someone's home and meet people? When can I go and have a cup of coffee in a shop? Um, there is sort of a, a frustration because we feel like perhaps we're near the end, but, but when is it going to end? And uh, I, when are we going to get together as a church? We, we don't know when we'll be meeting in the way that we used to meet, and I really miss worshipping together. Um, and I know a lot of you will be missing a lot of different things. It's my daughter's 18th birthday this week, and she really wants to party. And uh, it's really difficult for her. Um, but this is actually often a verse that Christians use to help them feel good in difficult circumstances. You know, God has a, a plan for me. Clearly, he's going to help me out of this situation and all my problems go away. Um, and yes, God does have a plan. He really has a plan and he has a hope for us, for our future. But actually, that's not the context of this verse. And that's what I particularly want to look at. Um, at the heart of the verse is not that we escape our circumstances, but that we would learn to thrive in the midst of it. So firstly, I want to just give you a little bit of the history of what's going on with Jeremiah uh, when he, he um, speaks of this verse. The whole nation were taken into exile by the Babylonians. So it wasn't just one person in prison like Paul. It was a whole nation that were really imprisoned. And uh, this was a punishment from God for their disobedience, and, and they, they were refusing to follow God wholeheartedly. And um, various people in this situation, a prophet, uh, actually a false prophet called Hananiah, he comes along, and I suppose to help everybody feel good, he says, in two years, this is all going to be over. And Jeremiah goes, hold on, hold on. He confronts Hananiah. And he says, actually, this is going on for a jolly long time. And verse 10 tells us that it's going to be 70, 70 more years before this nationwide imprisonment is over. And with that in mind, we get to the promise uh, that I read from in verse 11. However, before Jeremiah shares this promise, he gives them this directive from verse 7, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. And this is not what the Israelites wanted to hear. They wanted to be told they're going home. We want to be told we're allowed in each other's homes. They wanted to be told that their suffering was going to end. We want to be told that social distancing is going to end and that we don't have to wear masks when we're in confined spaces. They wanted to start planting their own crops in their own land again. And we want our economy to stop sliding further further and further back. And instead, God's plan for them was to stay right where they were and to help prosper the nation, help ask them to pray to prosper the nation that enslaved them. And, you know, you can just imagine 
how difficult this would be because they're facing the crushing blow of all that's happened. And you might be facing things like you're never going to go back to your old job. Perhaps you've been made redundant. I know many people have. Um, you, you're just so aware that things are not going to be the same again. And Jeremiah is giving them hope in the middle of these very difficult circumstances and promising not that the end will come soon, but that God is doing something in their hearts and that he's calling them to put their trust and their hope in him whilst they go through this situation. As I said earlier, I, I really felt God telling me to speak of this verse. But what I just want to clarify here, just in case you're all worried, is I really didn't, in fact, I said, oh God, you're not saying to me this is going to go on for 70 years, is it? And I was thinking... <laughs> I don't want to be some prophet of doom here. Um, but it wasn't what God was saying to me. He was just drawing me to these verses to encourage us to pray. It's like a call to prayer as I looked at what God was saying to us. And uh, it's a call for all of us. And um, I've sort of created a picture of a prayer sandwich because we find here that each side of this lovely encouraging verse is a call to prayer and it's like um, the two parts of a sandwich, each side um, of a lovely sandwich are slices of bread that hold it together and um, sort of make it happen, make the sandwich work. So I'm sort of going to look at prayer at the top of the bottom, and I've called the first one the top slice. Um, so here we have our sandwich, and the top slice is verse 7, where I, I read the beginning of it earlier. Seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Uh, this verse is calling us to seek God for the peace and the prosperity of our city, um, our town, our nation. Um, and because we are such a global world, everything is so linked, God is calling us to pray for the nations. I really believe that. Jeremiah was calling the Israelites to pray for the Babylonians, their new politicians, if you were like. These were not people they voted for. They were not leaders they agreed with. They were worshipping idols, which was so against what God was doing and a serious sin. Um, and they were setting a bad example. But God was saying, pray for the prosperity of the city for which I've called you into exile. I mean, God is calling us to pray for our nation, not to criticize it. I, I just feel if, if we get hold of this and pray for the blessing of our nation, the blessing of um, other nations in the world that perhaps we're not agreeing with, if we get hold of this, God, the promise is that God will bless us whilst we're in this situation. And uh, let's not join with the constant media criticism. I, I just find it so sad, the criticism all the time of, of people who are trying to do their best with a completely new situation. And very sad when I see criticism on social media. This is not a time for criticizing. This is a time of calling on God and asking him to bless our leaders and to bless those who are responsible for making decisions and to bless our nation. This is, it just feels like such a turning point in our nation. We need to pray for God's blessing. It's a call to prayer. It's a call to ask God to transform Transform our society. You know, only God can transform our society. Only God can, as we call on him, can help with the tragedy of racism and injustice in our society, the suffering um, of people that are without jobs. Only God can help them. The pain of those who can't continue with treatment because um, the hospitals need to be um, kept free for the virus. And uh, only God 
can help. Only God can break through. And that's where our answers come from. That's who we're praying to, a God who gives us hope and gives us a future. The future is in his hands. He's just saying, will you come and pray and seek the prosperity of your nation? And then skipping the luscious filling in verse 11, we go on to verse 12, where Jeremiah again is calling us to prayer. It says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Seeking God with all your heart is about yielding to him. Um, and uh, I, I find that really difficult sometimes. Yielding to God in prayer is saying no to busyness, no to overworking, no to that just one, that little job that needs doing. And I find it really difficult, but I know that's what yielding my heart is all about. And I know that God is challenging me at the moment to yield my um, focus, because as a person, I'm very focused, and he's calling me to say, come on, Joe, set aside time and yield with all your heart. Pray with all your heart. Make that time to come into the presence of God where he loves to spend time with us. It's not that God needs our prayers. God wants to see and know a yielded heart in our lives. It's not that God is desperate for us to worship him. He wants to know that we want a relationship with him. And that's what he's asking of us today. He's asking us to call out with all our hearts. A very funny thing happened to me, a slightly embarrassing thing really this week. I, we take the, the dog for a walk and we walk through a field and um, up, sort of up, it's called Happy Valley. And um, Sometimes the dog plays around the field, but sometimes he runs up into the woods and disappears for about 10 minutes, and we walk the length of the field, and usually he pops back by the time we get to the end of the field. Anyway, this time he didn't come back, um, and I was just praying as I walked around the field. You know, there were various people playing with their children or playing football, whatever, And uh, I'm praying there and just praying for God to bless our town, praying praying for God to bless our nation. And I was calling on the name of Jesus. And and then every so often I would stop and call Jake, our dog, and and just shout out loudly because, you know, the woods are quite big, um, Jake. And uh, he um, didn't come. So I would carry on praying. And then every so often I would call out Jake and carry on praying. Anyway, I got so sort of into the groove that suddenly at the top of my voice, instead of shouting Jake, I shouted Jesus like this. Like Suddenly there's this real embarrassment. Look around, try not to let anyone see anything. But I just felt God speak to me as I walked away embarrassed. Um, He wants us to call out his name over our town and over our nation. He wants his name to be lifted high. Roger prayed earlier and spoke to us earlier, bring back our king. This is a time when Jesus' name needs to be lifted high over our town. Let's bring back Jesus. Let's bring him back into our lives. Bring him back into our prayers. Bring him back into our anxieties and worries, into those situations that we find really difficult. Bring Jesus back and declare his name because Jesus' name is above every name and at his name every knee will bow. Jesus is the one that can heal our land, save our nation and bring us all back to a place of worshipping together, physically together again in this place. Breakthrough comes when we seek him with all of our hearts, when he has the priority over our busyness and our work and the demands of children. That's when breakthrough comes. And then I want to get to the filling of this sandwich, the lovely verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. 
What a glorious hope. God is in control. He has plans, and despite the fact that it doesn't feel like it sometimes, he has plans, and we will look back and we'll say, surely God was in this place. Surely God was moving in this situation. And the virus was not a surprise to him. He is going to use this awful situation um, to bring people back to him. And uh, just a question, what hard thing are you going through at the moment? In the midst of your suffering, if you want hope, call out to the Lord. Prayer is the answer for every situation. But cling to, him, cling to verse 11 for the right reasons, that God is able to help and deliver you. Um, but his timing is perfect. No prayer is wasted. No prayer is forgotten by God. He responds to the cry of his heart. And we can be confident, I am confident, that my, he is listening to my prayers and he will answer them and respond. He knows the plans he has for us. Last week, David read a lovely verse from Philippians. I'm going to read it to get, again. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Perseverance in prayer leads to perseverance in walking through what we're facing. We find peace through prayer and coming into his presence. And that peace enables us to trust God that he knows exactly what he's doing and his plans for us are good and there is hope for our future. So as we walk this crazy earth at the moment, let us remember this, that having a God's perspective through our trials means that we learn perseverance. As we persevere in prayer, we learn to persevere. And God will be faithful in everything that we pray for. Amen. Thank you.